It's Thursday, October 17th, 2013, and welcome to another Galactic Netcast. This is the Alien Invasion number 86. From Waterloo, Iowa, I'm Dave. Mr. Jameson Nelson joining me this evening from Wausau, Wisconsin, is Brad, Professor Hennessy Ludwig, and Anessa Naya Moyens from Denton, Texas. Greetings, one and all. Greetings and salutations. Get what out of my are, head. I was thinking that. Uh, what are the names <laughs> from? Uh, they are from the Devil Girl from Mars movie that I let me, am... let me let me let me let me guess. That is your pick tonight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you purposely watched it, or were, was it like uh, were your eyes like forced open, and you were tied down, and you were forced to watch it? Well. <laughs> this has become the BDSM show? What, have, we, have we switched formats and nobody told me? It's a clockwork show. Me without my fashionable rubber gear. I feel left out. <laughs> That's okay. You've got the tentacle gear. point to look forward to. <laughs> no, no, no spoilers. No spoilers. Sorry, sorry. Um, no, it just... The amount of time that I had to find a pick, it fit perfectly. So, yeah, I came across it while browsing, and it's like, hmm, old cheesy sci-fi movie. Sounds good. Nothing beats it. All right. Nope. This is the show. This is the podcast. This is the program where we talk about uh, beings from elsewhere in the uh, vast galaxy, the universe, and their appearances in film, TV, video games. Comic books and in real life, this is the Alien Invasion podcast. Uh, the show is uh, sectioned off into three areas: the news that uh, that's just what's happening this week, uh, the creature feature, our spotlight of a certain kind of alien, and our picks for the week, as we were just talking about with the Nessas. Uh, for our audio subscribers, if you want to see us record the show live on video. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Plus. We'll alert you as to when that's going to go down. Uh, we do have the live page at galacticnetcasts.com slash live or go to youtube.com slash galacticnetcasts. So let's get the show going and start it with uh, the news. In the news... Okay, how does this sound? Uh, alien, Predator, and Prometheus all in one universe. What? Madness. That's listen too again. much listen, awesome. Listen again. Oh, okay, sorry. Alien, Predator, and Prometheus all sharing the same universe. Are they two? It's going to be BFFs? Forever, yo. They're going to Well, be... I mean, Alien and Prometheus obviously are... A part right. of the same franchise, the same and we have had an Alien versus Predator movie, so I uh -huh. guess. How did that work? Were they in the same universe then, or did, was there like a, like a gap in the space-time continuum? And they, what? what I, I've never seen the Alien versus Predator movies. Uh, I haven't what? seen Alien versus Predator either. Yeah, I haven't seen. I heard that <laughs> the first one was crap. The second one was. Eh. Um. So yeah, I got nothing. I guess we got some watching to do. One of us needs to watch those movies just to see, I guess. Anyway, what, these days? Okay. what we're talking about oh, here... Oh, but is wait, there was an Alien vs. Predator comic book. Well, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about what? comic, comic books. books. Comic books. You know, the you speak my language. The pictures and the colors and stuff. Yeah, I'm surprised that... <laughs> Back in my day. Sometimes they're in black and white. We didn't days. have your fancy color back in my day. <laughs> Another reason why you should be watching us live or on YouTube is Brad is playing with his Logitech uh, ca uh, webcam features, uh, add-ons, and he was in just he was doing the 1920s or 1930s. Look. I've decided that whenever I use the old man voice, I'm gonna switch to the old classic black and white movie. Look, thing, <laughs> stuff. Too okay, you, I'm done now. Too bad you can't make your audio really lo-fi. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Add random <laughs> crackles when Brad talks. Crackles and pops. Yep. Yeah, exactly. All right, so down to this uh, business here. Uh, Dark, Horse, Dark Horse is remaking the universe. Aliens, predators, and engineers will come to engineers with the aliens in... Oh, my. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Alien, 
Harvard and engineers, oh my. Oh my. They will come together in 2014 when the Aliens, Predators, and Alien vs. Predator comics get completely rebooted. What is the deal with these companies, these publishers, rebooting comics all the time? What the hell? Well, uh, it depends on the situation. Uh, like in the case of, of Alien uh, versus Predator in the comics, and I've... I owned two of them, and uh, I sold them recently and gave the money to a charity. Uh, but oh, uh, oh, they weren't good enough for you, Brad. They weren't good enough for you anymore. You just sold them off. Okay, for those of you who are are watching the video, you're gonna vomit for a second. But that's uh, six thousand comic books that I have sitting behind me. So uh, yeah, I, I'm surprised I've kissed a girl. And uh, I have a lot of comic books, so it was time to get rid of them. I've kissed that girl, uh, and uh, <laughs> I wanted to thin stuff out. And one of our state, ra I work for a radio station group, and one of the stations was doing a uh, uh, rummage sale uh, for uh, a cancer charity, St. Jude's. So it was to help a good cause, and I wanted to get rid of comics. Uh, so there you go. So why did they? Why are they rebooting the Alien versus? Oh Predator? yeah, I suppose to finish my tale, so this actually <laughs> has context. Um, they may have set something up in the comic books which had history that had not been established. Uh, those comics were done in the early '90s, um, and they may have said, "Okay, this is some of the. This is how the aliens were made," and if Prometheus changes that because oh. now they've established canon where the comic books were not. So they may have rebooted because of that reason, or uh, they may have just sucked and they decided to start fresh. <laughs> See, I, didn't, I didn't know that the Alien vs. Predator were comics before they were movies. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Because uh, Alien had the uh, Alien Dark Horse Comics had the rights to Aliens and Predator, and they went, "Hey, you got Predators on my Alien? No, you got pre Aliens on my Predators." And then they decided to make a comic book. Yeah, delicious. And it was tasty. Mm -hmm. So Chris Robertson, writer for Alien, said they won't be doing anything directly related to Ripley and company, but the four movies are canon, and nothing he does will contradict them. Um, so that kind of feeds into what you were just talking about. Uh, there will be an entirely new cast of characters and move away from the militaristic vibe of the later movies and back to the horror tones of the original film. The four series are taking a writer's room approach and having the writers collaborate, which is cool. I love when they do that. Let's switch to uh, Brad's video here. Yep, so here is uh, some artwork that they've got. Definitely horror tones. I'm going to scroll back up towards the top. And here is uh, somebody in a room that is uh, lousy with aliens. <laughs> Holy crap, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. So. All right, looks good. Go. It looks very creepy. Just the artwork itself looks creepy. I was reminded today that the original tagline on the poster of Alien uh, was, in space, no one can hear you scream. Yeah. I was listening to, actually, uh, Star Talk uh, with Neil deGrasse Tyson on Stitcher. Shut up! Yeah. Shut up! I was listening to it today, too. Yep. And I was, like, I was about to say, oh my god, I heard that earlier as well. <laughs> I feel left out, because I listened to the Jodcast today. The but you listened to you used Stitcher today though, didn't you? I did. Uh, oh, and I listened to an episode of Night Welcome to Night Vale as well. Okay, I bet you were going to mention Stitcher later on in this show. <laughs> That's a spoiler. Not spoiling <laughs> anything. We always talk about Stitcher. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so, so back to the else? story. What? What an episode. No, I was going to say what else with the story? Like who else did they talk to? Oh, oh, uh, Paul Tobin. Writer of Prometheus says the focus of these seri or this series will be on original char char characters as well, but the engineers will be back. What role the engineers will have remains to be seen. He will also be playing with the creator creation theme set forward in the movie as well as 
a few other mis mysteries that were left open. So we have the possibility here of this comic kind of branching off from Prometheus and adding more backstory that we didn't get from, um, from the movie, it sounds like. Yeah, it sounds like they may be adding more of a backstory, which will be nice. Um, I wonder if they'll be consulting with um, Ridley Scott on this. Is it kind of his doubt baby, it. Right? I what, doubt you it. Doubt it? Oh, it would know. be cool. What are you doing, Brad? I'm looking for my glasses of pretentiousness because I've got something coming up in my next story, but I can't seem to find my... Oh, you're getting, you're getting props for your story. Hell's yeah, I am, but I, I don't <laughs> see uh, I don't see my pince nez for some reason. I wonder if my boy absconded with it and put it somewhere else. Oh well. Okay, yeah. so Chris Sabila, a writer for Alien vs. Predator. On the other hand, are counting uh, the individual movies as canon, but is ignoring the two Alien vs. Predator movies as he thinks they exist in their own little bubble. Um, he's starting from a clean slate. He talks about the protagonist for the series being strong enough to carry a book on their own and that they are more than just monster fodder. I like that, monster fodder. <laughs> it's a nice play on words. And the book will uh, be affected by the Prometheus series, but he couldn't give details. So I'm thinking... <coughs> that they have consulted with Ridley Scott here, and they've, they're have they going to be kind of setting up the next uh, Prometheus movie, possibly. What it depends, because, I mean, if one's giving, like, potentially the uh, writer Paul Tobin that's going to be doing the Prometheus comics, um, if he's possibly doing more of a backstory angle, like, Ridley Scott's, like, supposed to be moving forward with mm -hmm. Michael Fassbender and that I forget her name <laughs> that girl that was like flying off on her own so that's kind oh, of yeah. moving forward and one's okay. going back so I mean they might have flashbacks that would correspond or coincide with what's being done in the comics but I don't think they'll really touch on that too much but you would almost have to <clears throat> I'm distracted by what Brad's doing. Because every time the <laughs> microphone picks up the on the hangout, it just blanks it's just his room. His his office. <laughs> <Nothing. Sorry. laughs> He's got the mute button now. Okay. Um what was what was I trying to say? Oh Okay, uh, so they would kinda have to They would have to add content. Um, that wasn't revealed in the Prometheus movie if they're going to be doing backstory, right? Because uh, they're going to be explaining some things that wasn't explained in the movie. Right, but I don't yeah. think these things would really affect the movie too much as long as they already have an idea of where the story's gone so far, I guess. Okay. All right. So all they've really said is, like, these engineers came and you have, like, the guy falling into the water, spreading his genes and creating life on another planet, and so it might have, like, who knows, it could be about that guy and the moments that it led up to that particular moment in time. Yeah. So, I mean, you never really know how they go with that. It could be, like, on a broad scale or following a few characters before they expand to, like, another storyline or yeah. something. They could, so. they could, they choose to reveal as little or as much as they want, and they, they may choose to reveal very little, you know? Right, and I mean, it's kind of like with um, if you think about the Walking Dead series, you've got the TV show. Well, the comic is, they're now kind of their separate things at this yeah. point. But there's also a web series for the Walking Dead that doesn't tie into the show at all. Okay. So, I mean, you can have multiple things taking place in the same universe and even have like a backstory, but it doesn't affect what's going on now. Like, the web series that I actually watched, um, I know that they've continued with other series for The Walking Dead online, and um, the one that I watched was basically in the first episode when Rick comes across this zombie that's laying there in the park with just like the torso up. Yep. It's basically her story and how she ended up where she oh, is now. Oh, interesting. So. That's fascinating. You never okay. know. It could be something like that. 
Okay. All right. There, either way, I would. I'm. I'm on board with this. I'll actually probably buy this in some form or another. What do you think? Final thoughts, there, Brad. You're. The, you're the comic guy. Give us I'm your all, two cents here. I'm all for it. Firm believer in it. Okay. I don't think that they're going to consult Ridley Scott, though. I think that they would. They would be. <laughs> Because Ridley Scott has come right out and said, I want this to be pretty. It doesn't necessarily have to be the best story. So he, like, when he did Prometheus, he actually cut whole bits out that actually explained whole portions of the film. That's dumb. Um, that's, that's where most of us, that's why most of us like films, is for the story. Yeah, and that's why if you really want to understand Prometheus, you need to get the director's cut of it um, there, and watch is that. A, is there a director's cut? Yes, if you get oh. the if you get the Blu-ray, there's ex oh. a lot of extra material. Okay. So. Cool. All right. So all four titles: Aliens, Predators, Aliens versus Predators, and Prometheus are scheduled to come out in 2014 from Dark Horse. Now, I didn't realize reading this entire story that they were separate titles. I thought it was just like all one, but they're all. Oh gonna no. Be, they're gonna no, be, they're all separate. Okay, but they're going to be kind of crossing over in in different ways. I'm I'm guessing. Yes. Okay. All right, let's move on to our second story, and that is Anessa's. Woo! So, I know people were devastated when the, Pre the Peruvian Air Force uh, basically shut down their UFO investigation department, but good news! <laughs> it's reopening. I got, really Yay! Drunk. I, I got really drunk the day I found out they closed it. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> you were that Dave broken drank up his over it. Away. He's like, what? Yo, that you, you sons of bitches! You, you close this wonderful little thing in the beer. I need another beer. <laughs> so yeah, um, the Peruvian Air Force, or I guess they, I'm surprised that they actually can afford an Air Force. I didn't think they <laughs> made enough money as a country to to. to it's have. a couple of puddle jumpers. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> People from Peru are going to hear this. And yep. You, you have an all of our Peruvian fans <laughs> are turning this off. If you listen long enough to our feedback, you'll realize that we have a global audience. So we do have, like, it's amazing that there's yeah. people listening to us, like, not just on the other side of the country, like, across the pond. Yes, yes. and hello to the wonderful Aussie family who's listening to us swear <laughs> and curse the Peruvian Air Force and making fun of them. Okay, so oh. Peruvian All right, so the Peruvian Air Force, known as FAP, <laughs> has. <laughs> okay, I think you broke Brad just took off his headset. I think I broke him. <laughs> yeah. Good job. You get the points for the, for the episode. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm sure it's. Actually, I don't know what force is. And... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I saw this story, and I saw their initialism for Peruvian Air Force, and I'm like, I'm including it. <laughs> there are a lot. I'm looking at the story, and there are a lot there's of... There's a lot of initialisms. Yeah. There's, okay. So... <laughs> there's O-I-F-A-A. -A, and D-I-N-E-A, -E or then A-E, or yeah. whatever. And, yeah, it's crazy. So... <laughs> Um, so anyway, the uh, Peruvian Air Force has announced that it will reactivate their dormant UFO investigation department, known officially as the Office of Anomalous Aerial Phenomena Research, or OIFAA. OIFA! I was, was going to say, or as I'm going to call it now, is OIFA. OIFA! <laughs> that just sounds fun, and it's much shorter than the Office of Anomalous Aerial sounds Phenomena Research. Very close to OIVE. Continue. <laughs> Oive, ofa. Um, the official announcement and relaunch ceremony will take place at an upcoming event held by the Peruvian Air Force's Directorate of Aerospace Interests, uh, DINAI, or D I N I E. <laughs> the event has been advertised as a meeting on anomalous aerial phenomena and will feature a discussion on the Nazca lines and extraterrestrials. It is being held October 18th, 2013 at the Denai offices in Lima, Peru. So anyone in Peru that wants to check this out, I don't know if it's like open for the public, but you can certainly try to... Sneak in. Sneak in. <laughs> yeah, the Nazca lines, so those, those are the ones that are like, uh, they're in shapes that you can only see from high Right, above. from above, right. Yeah. And I yeah. believe we probably talked about that in our second episode, maybe? I think you're right. 
Back in my day, day. we (laughs) talked about the Nazca lines back in probably the second episode of this show. (laughs) I really need to go back and re-listen or listen to y'all's episodes. So, um, OIFA was originally opened in 2001, but it was dormant, or it went dormant around 2005. OIFA's founders, retired FAP commander Julio Flores, <laughs> occasionally reactivated the new form. I'm sorry, I'm seeing Brad laugh in the corner <laughs> of my screen. Um, anyway, so Julio Flores occasionally reactivated the department to investigate high-profile <coughs> UFO sightings, and he's actually set to continue heading the department. Um, so yeah, it's, like, they they say that, um, possible reasons why they're reopening this dormant investigation, uh, in UFOs is, apparently there's been a lot of UFO events, such as a popular sighting in La Molina, and a recent sighting by officials in the jungle, so, yeah, um, the UFO researcher, Scott, uh, Corrales, posted information that he had received from Peruvian colleges at his website uh, saying, um, I guess his website's called Inexplicita, uh, the Journal of Hispanic Ufology. They claim the that FAP says the reopening is due to a uh, response to the significant increase in claims and reports of anomalous aerial objects commonly referred to as unidentified flying objects in the skies over Peruvian territory. They also say that OIFA will be sponsored by Peru's National Commission for Aerospace, uh, CONIDA, or C-O-N-I-D-A, and that OIFA will be made up of civilian personnel. So <clears throat> I, I do think it's cool that other countries um, have actual departments or groups that will investigate, like official, they're legit. Like, they're officially investigating UFO sightings and reports. Yeah, because, so, like, like, our, like, the U.S. hasn't had... We're, like, a great big denial years. about everything. Yeah, we haven't... So it's been it, since the 1960s. <laughs> we haven't even. So, and it's, it's nice that they're just coming out and saying, look, we know we kind of quit things back in 2005, but the, it's been really active lately, so we're going to go ahead and restart. And... There you go. Like we're not hiding anything. We're gonna be open about what it is that we're investigating. So I think that's really cool of Peru it and seems the Peruvian like the government. The world, it seems like the rest of the world is very open to these things. You know, we're the U.S. is very like I don't know. It's weird. We're we're really shady about that sort of thing. Like yeah. well, I think the British government. <laughs> yeah, like the British government's like, hey, look at all these documents on UFOs and. The U.S. is like, hey, look at all these documents about UFOs. You can read five words because everything's blacked out. But uh, I think part of it is, you know, like the um, some of our stealth planes have been UFOs. So I think that might be why we're shady and quiet about it. Because in some cases, it might actually be something that we're actually working on that yeah, is so fast that. and so stealthy that, you know, we don't want to necessarily call attention to it. We need to do look at the monkey and then yeah. <laughs> it's a weather balloon. Yeah, exactly. Look at the monkey. <laughs> look at the monkey. Look that's the, monkey. the that's the distraction technique of Yeah, you you saw this, but look at this monkey here and you, Look how yeah. adorable it is. It's dancing. It's playing the tambourine. And wearing a cute little bellhop Bez. costume. Yeah. <laughs> All right, interesting. Uh, well, I applaud. The- <laughs> <laughs> Great segue out of that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's, that's. But you know what? People can contact us about our uh, crazy shenanigans uh, on our show. How do they do that? Well, there's many ways, Brad. I'm glad that you brought that up. Thanks. Uh, you can email us. The email address is galacticnetcasts at gmail dot com. You can also uh, send us a text via our text number which also doubles as our voicemail number. Crazy. It is 805. I know. I don't know. It's weird how that works. 805-328-3966. Or leave a comment on our website, galacticnetcasts.com. We would love to hear from you. Positive or negative feedback. In fact, we have a little negative feedback later on. I think this is our first time ever that we've got actually gotten negative feedback. Uh, it's not <gasps> negative. It's an opportunity. It's of... Okay. 
Yes, it's you're right. It's constructive criticism. It's constructive criticism. Yes. Like we always say, negative or positive, it's all helpful. So Exactly. If it let sucks, us let us know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Galactic, galacticnetcast at gmail.com. The voice and mail number is 805-328-3966. And you can find all this contact information at galacticnetcast.com. All right, Bradley, uh, what do you got for us? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about famous people and UFOs. <gasps> bum, dun, dun, bum, dun. Bum. It, that was creepy. Kind of cool. Well, hang on, hang on. Let's do that again. Okay? Do the headline one more time, Brad. Okay. <clears throat> UFOs and aliens, famous people who believe in extraterrestrials. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turn that tension right up. So uh, there have been stories about UFOs uh, that uh, celebrities and dignitaries, um, even uh, now former presidents who believe in them or have uh, witnessed UFO events. Um, and uh, somebody has comprised the list of the top 20 celebrities uh, and famous folks uh, who believe that they have seen a UFO. Okay, I'm going to jump in here real quick. Mm -hmm. I have not looked at the story. Okay. I'm going to make a prediction as okay. to what one of these celebrities are going to be. Okay? I'm just, okay. Pull, I'm just pulling it out. I just have a feeling. I have a feeling that one of these celebrities is Fran Drescher. You may be right. Okay. Or you may be crazy. Or you just may be the lunatic we're looking for. All right. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> so, first on the list, former President Jimmy Carter. Um, he uh, was president, of course, from 76 to 80. And uh, he said, I don't laugh at people anymore when they say they've seen UFOs. I've seen one myself. Uh, during his campaign, he promised that he will make all UFO-related documents public. That didn't I happen. Think, uh, what's that? That did not happen, though. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> well, he probably got in there and tried, and they were like, no. Yeah. Yeah, you're the president, but you don't have all the power. You can't tell us to do this. <laughs> I'm sure somebody went, uh, sir, sir, uh, no. Uh, number two on our list here, Mikhail Gorbachev. Now, that's interesting, because we had a story, oh, good Lord, a uh, couple of months ago, I think, where... Uh, it said that Soviet dignitary, the president or you know the, whoever was the leader, uh, depending on what form of government they had at the time, got a briefcase filled with information uh, of, about aliens, hmm. supposedly. Do you remember that? Yes, I kind of do. Yes. Okay, previous episode. You'd Check back. You'll 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 hear it. Yeah, you know um, what? I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking about this. These these presidents and and heads of government saying that they believe in UFOs. Uh, don't you think that they all have gotten? This <laughs> <laughs> is doing my doing the Dave Nelson dance. <laughs> I just see hands and I'm like, <laughs> we need a gif of that. <laughs> Them saying that they believe in UFOs and aliens is like me saying that I believe that radio waves exist. You know, it's like, because I'm sure that they've all been briefed, right? You would think. I, I, I kind of think about it like Independence Day. It's like a need-to-know basis, and unless you need to know, they don't tell you. Okay. But, but I'm sure somebody knows. But as president, wouldn't wouldn't that like be one of the first questions that you'd want to ask? Like, oh, by the way, where where are the aliens at? What? Depends on the president, I would think. First off, <laughs> who needs that <laughs> sort of story circulated by a former press secretary? <laughs> the first thing he did when he walked through the door is show me the aliens. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think that that would be bad. Totally um, running for president once I turn 35, and that's going to be my first question whenever I get elected. Bam! <laughs> I'm done. So vote for me. Okay. <laughs> okay, who else? So, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, the reason why I wanted to get my pince-nez 
uh, was uh, for Lord Hugh Caswell Treenhair Dowding. Dowding. <clears throat> Britain Royal RAF Fighter Commander Air Chief Marshal First Baron Dowding Hugh Caswell. You can't say that without having that. Holy crap, little... <laughs> how many names does he have? <laughs> Well, he's a big he's a big dude here, and uh, he states that uh, I'm convinced that these objects, UFOs, do exist, and they are not manufactured by any nations on Earth. Ah, number five on the list, Fran Drescher. You were yes! right. I knew it. Uh, she okay. said that her and her ex-husband met because they had chips planted in their uh, bodies by by the aliens. Let me can can I can I, can I explain? We. I believe that we talked about I think Grand so Drescher on a yeah. previous episode. Yes. yes. Boy, this is like old home week, isn't it? Wow. Uh, Elvis Presley is on the list. Of course, he was taking a lot of drugs, so I'm going to move on uh, to the next guy who took a lot of drugs, John Lennon. John Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> um, he and uh, his girl, his then girlfriend May Pang, uh, allegedly saw a UFO. Uh, they were on the roof of his uh, penthouse, and uh, they saw it at close range. And it's even said that uh, before his death, Lennon allegedly received an egg-shaped object from alien visitors. Whoa. Now, there is a uh, complete list of 20. We only gave you seven. There are 20 on the list. Well, we only gave you six. What? We skipped over Dr. Herman Oberth. Oh, yeah, we did. German, <laughs> German rocket engineer. See, dude, he's a rocket scientist. He should know. It is my thesis that flying saucers are real and that they are spaceships from another... So Wait, I'm sorry. He needs a German accent. Yeah, he does. Oh, he's, he's a German, a German rocket engineer. Rocket. <laughs> Come on, Brad, you can do it. <laughs> it is my thesis people. that flying saucers are real and that they are spaceships from another solar system. Yeah! <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay, so anyway. <clears throat> it's just German just seems like such an angry language when you hear it. You it say is. I love you in German and you think you're going to get punched in the face. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you could see the uh, entire article uh, at... Uh, oh, good lord. Uh, International Business Times. I believe that they're out of... Are they out of Australia? Australia? Australia. Yeah, they are. AUIBtimes.com. All right, and another uh, shout-out to our Australian fans that have yeah. contacted us before. Yeah. <laughs> so, wasn't, wasn't Elvis Presley the one that uh, drank beer with Billy Carter on the White House roof? Wasn't that the story? <laughs> Could be. He was uh, also yeah. out of his mind on drugs when he went to go talk to Nixon. <laughs> Maybe that's it. I'm I'm mixing up my stories. Possibly. Yeah. I don't know. Billy Carter was uh he was a party monster. Billy Beer. Billy I, Beer. I, Boom. Billy Beer can when I was collecting beer cans. That by the way, that was a that was a weird like there was a time period where that was a thing. Like collecting oh, beer yeah. cans. Like back in the 1970s and 1980s, like beer can collections were huge. Yeah. I started one even. <laughs> We used to uh, scour the out. ditches for beer cans. <laughs> what? What, Anessa? No, I said I was too young. Oh, yeah. Back yeah. in my day, we used to collect aluminum cans because they were great to look at, and some of them were tin, and you had to use a special device to open them up so you could drink your beer. <laughs> All right. I collected G.I. Joes. <laughs> Did you? That's cool. I had G.I. Joes as a kid. Sure. Wow, that's awesome! That's very, it's very non. Um, well, I mean, I also had gem, so I mean, I wasn't like completely tomboyish. But growing up, I had, um, I would say the vast majority of like my friends were boys. Okay. So that's I've cool. always been one of the guys. Gem and the Rockers. <laughs> what was, uh, was her band? Ooh, gem. Yeah, that's right. Gem and the gem holograms. And Jim and the Holograms. What was I thinking? <laughs> I missed that. Huh? Yeah. I actually hey. had one of the Misfits, too. And, it, and the dolls came with a little cassette tape that you could listen to their theme song. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Let's rock out. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jem had a talking computer too, didn't she? She did. Yeah, that's right. Although for some reason I remember the lyrics to the Misfits song more than I do for Jem's theme song. The Misfits? You mean the band, the actual band, the Misfits? No. No, there was a rival band in the cartoon series called the Misfits. Okay. And like in the themes, the opening theme song, like it would be Jem, she's singing, and then all of a sudden, like the Misfits. Uh, come in and they've got like their big hair and crazy different colored makeup because it was the 80s. <clears throat> and um, yeah. they would basically sing about how they are the misfits and their songs are better and they were going to get Jem, basically. So it wasn't, it wasn't Glenn Danzig in the band, The Misfits? No, that would have oh. made for a much different cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it? Um, wasn't Glenn Danzig, he was in that band, The Misfits, I think. I don't know. Um, it sounds like I'm singing, so I would say yes, because yeah. I have. I never actually paid attention to who was in the Misfits. I have some of the Misfits stuff, but okay. that's who it sounds like to me. All right, let's move on. Uh, that was the news. Thank you very much, guys. Um, before we move on to the creature feature, let us let us thank our our first sponsor. It is Audible.com. If you like books but don't have time to sit down and read one, if you're too busy in the car or in the gym or, you know, if you spend a lot of time with headphones in your ears, ear earbuds in your ears, then maybe you should subscribe to audible.com. And they are offering you a free 30-day trial, you, dear listener, free 30-day trial to give you the chance to check out their service and one free audio book. And we have had... Now, okay, sorry. before you do your pick, Maybe we should say if our Australian family friends are listening, maybe they should skip over this particular pick that Dave has found, this little treasure from audible.com. Because <laughs> apparently, was it, they were from Australia, right? Where they sit around and listen. Yeah, yeah. The whole family yes. listens, yeah. <clears throat> like the whole family listens, and this particular thing is not exactly kid friendly? Oh, it's not kid friendly. What I At will all. do, what I will do is I will try to censor myself <laughs> a little bit here. But if you guys are worried, you're the Australian family, if you're worried, then <laughs> turn us down or skip ahead or what do you get whatever you got to do. Skip ahead like 3 minutes and you'll be fine. All right. So, uh, <laughs> I had I couldn't pass this up. I saw it, I'm like, okay, we've had pornographic books before. At least one before, so... It was a short story, and it wasn't very detailed. It wasn't a short story. It was a full-fledged Audible book. Oh, was it? Yeah, it Oh, was. I don't remember that one. Maybe yeah. I like space or something. About? I was talking about my pick from John Scalzi. Oh, I didn't know... The alien sex story, How um, I Proposed to My Wife. That's right. I remember that now. Okay. <laughs> this is uh, a book called Alien Sex Slave 3. So, this is a collection of similar books, all called Alien Sex Slave. It's the Alien Sex Slave series. This is the third one, and there's tentacles in there somewhere. Yes, it's Alien Sex Slave 3, Breeding Tentacle Invasion. Again, Breeding Tentacle Invasion. <laughs> okay, so, so, if you're into hentai, this is the book for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's a brief synopsis, and I'm going to try to be clean about this as much as I can. After being abducted, life is a peaceful... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> After being abducted, beep and beep, life is peaceful for Alice on her new home, the alien planet Grios. The aliens had accepted her into their society at her request. The only condition was that she had to cater to the alien men's every sexual desire in exchange for a new peaceful life. <laughs> Much to everyone's surprise, another group of aggressive space creatures moves in for an attack. Alice is then taken hostage and held for ransom by this new race of tentacle-clad aliens. Now she has a whole new mission survive the alien tentacle invasion, and escape their sticky clutches. 
You can only you can kind of imagine, not really imagine. You can kind of guess where the story's going to go. <clears throat> yes. Tentacles. I mean, come on. Tentacle porn for the win. Yeah. So uh, if, if you're into this kind of thing, try this as your pick, or you know, feel free to browse Audible.com. There's plenty of other books that you can try for free with the thir- the three the free 30 day trial. And uh, what we want you to do is go to audibletrial.com slash galactic netcast. Use that URL, please. please. Audibletrial.com slash galactic netcast. That shows Audible that we're sending people their way. So if you're, if you're interested, use that URL, and uh, I'm sure that you will enjoy at least 30 days. If you like it after that, then uh, you might become a subscriber to audible.com. All right. See, that wasn't that bad. Come on. No, it wasn't that bad. You did good. All right. I think it was mainly like the first sentence that was the worst. Yeah. See, I beat that out. All right. Here we go. <laughs> and now it's time for creature feature. <laughs> All right. This is the uh, so-called a- uh, famous alien in history, or uh, you know, we pick them from movies, TV shows, or like. You know, reports of actual real aliens from people being abducted, that kind of thing. So, Anessa, what do you got for the creature feature this week? Um, this one is actually from the TV show Defiance. It's the uh, Indogenes, Indogenes, and um, they, the character that I'm most familiar with is, actually I don't remember how to say her name, like Me Yule, and she was the doctor in... Oh, those they, ones. Those, yeah, those. like they're very pale and they have um, a, like a patterned skin, like uh, hexagons, he- hexagonal patterns across their skin. It almost <clears> looks <throat> like a fibrous, a fibrous material that, that is, their, is their skin. Kind of. Right. Um, and they're completely hairless. There's no visible follicles or anything. And um, they have numerous genetic and technological implants, which are specific to their chosen profession, apparently. So they rarely live away from colonies or centers of technology. They value science, science, above everything else and often become doctors or scientists. Um, They tend to work to a point of obsession and they are given a short name at birth and later take a second name dependent on their implant and their profession. The indigene believe in science, so that believe in science so strongly that they are typically atheists. After death, Indigene will burn the dead and store the remains in small hexagonal boxes. They are capable of adapting to many situations and as such are quick to get along with other Votan races. And they share a unique relationship with the Kestithans, which I spoke about like 10 episodes ago. (laughs) Um, As they both feel uh, that they are the superior race. However, they are uncomfortable around humans, and many uh, many indigenes perished on board the Arks, making them the smallest race of the Votan Collective that made it to Earth. So, the Votan being the uh, different Arks, if you've ever seen or not seen Defiance, um, there's a bunch of Arks or ships that come to Earth with different alien races, and the aliens that come to Earth are known as the Votan Collective, and they are one of those aliens. Uh, races that came down here. Um, a little bit about their history. They evolved on the planet Darabo along with with the Castithans, or Castithans. I don't remember how they're pronounced. Yeah, it's Castithans. Castithans. Um, indigene scientists were the first to discover that the Votanis system was going to be destroyed in several hundred years, and sometime later began designing the arcs. They decided as a race to choose only the best and brightest of their species um, and have them board the Arks. They journeyed with six other races to Earth to colonize, and several years later, indigene scientists discovered a crashed Ark near the ruins of Edmonton and set up an energy barrier around it in order to make a study of it private. Um, So yeah, it's the, like I said, the only alien that I'm really familiar with of this species is the doctor and she's got a bit of an attitude and I really like her. <laughs> she doesn't have the best bed- bedside manner really. No, she was pretty blunt um, but she was 
very efficient and she knew what she was doing and she didn't take anyone's crap. <laughs> mm -hmm. And like I really liked her character just for that reason. So Yeah, but. if you get a chance, catch up on on the show. Um catch up on uh, Defiance because it's an awesome show. And I'm uh, really way behind on Defiance at this point. Oh, it's you got to finish watching the first season because it's it's one of the, one of the best shows that I think has come along for a while. Um, at least science fiction shows, that is. Yeah, it's entertaining. I I enjoyed it when I watched it. Um, but yeah, I just never got around to finishing it. Interesting premise: how they all just came to Earth and then the the Earthlings fought them, and now they're learning to get along together. And then there's other pe other creatures that they're fighting against together and it's it's interesting plus the yeah. whole old west vibe to it sort of yeah it does have like an old west vibe to it and um i guess they kind of realize that for the most part they need to try to get along in order to survive because there are some not so friendly alien races out there um that just basically go and like burn everything down and steal and whatnot so i love they the need fact to I love the fact that they've got all this like junk in orbit that keeps on <laughs> entering the atmosphere. It's like every once in a while something will just uh, fall through the atmosphere and land on somebody. Yeah. <laughs> so a little bit of a problem, but yeah. maybe we never got around to sending up our space vacuums to clean up the... Yes, throwback to last week. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, the Indigene... Um, I really dig their race just because they're very science oriented, and like I said, like the one character that I'm familiar with, I just enjoy her attitude. And there's an interesting, <laughs> there's an interesting backstory to her. That's so, I don't know if you've gotten that far yet, Anessa. I haven't really seen her much since they were fighting against the. Oh, I forget what they're called. The v Vorge Vulge. Is it the race that uh, the like ship... the really big monster things that they were fighting against, and they were like, she was trying to, um, she was like on this spire or this tower trying to do something. I forget what she was trying to do. It's been so long. I remember that episode. <clears throat> and and like everybody was up in the hills, like shooting down at the oh that was like aliens. Very, that was like the very first episode, I believe. I don't think so. Really? I think it was like halfway through, maybe. Okay, all right. I don't know. It, like I said, it's been a really long time since I've watched it, so it might have been the first episode, but I thought it was a little further on down the line. Um, I mean, not like towards the end of the season, but I think it was about like halfway, um, or at least within the... Uh, I'm trying to think. I want to say it's about halfway through. I could be wrong. If anybody else has a clue as to what's going on in the show, feel free to chime in. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> or I just need to try to find episodes and watch it. So. It's a great show. All right. Thank you, Anessa. Great creature feature this week. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> you mentioned. Hey. Uh, you mentioned Stitcher earlier. Um, yes. And they are our second sponsor of this podcast, Stitcher Smart Radio. It's a great way to listen to uh, podcasts and other audio uh, because it's like an app that you install on your device. And you don't necessarily have to hook up to like iTunes or download anything. If, as long as you have an internet connection, you can stream the shows through Stitcher Smart Radio. So where are you guys at as far as hours and minutes go of listening? I'm way behind Brad at 46 hours and 49 minutes. Yeah, I'm at 62 or 63 hours. I don't have my phone with me right now. It's in Actually, the other room. I could probably check. I could be stalker girlfriend. Hang on. Because <laughs> there's a little button that says friends activity. Oh, <laughs> great, 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 great. Another great, great feature of Stitcher. <laughs> Wait, you can stalk your great, friends great, 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 or yeah. significant others. Um... 73 hours and 25 minutes, apparently. Holy carp! So. Well, that's because I've been breaking it up between listening on my cell phone and uh, on my uh, Google Chrome browser. So, 
I try to listen to it at work, and it just fails because it's like I press play, and then I'm like, okay, cool. Like, it's been quiet for like the last five minutes. That means maybe <laughs> it'll be quiet for like another five or ten minutes. No. And then as soon as I click play and it starts getting interesting, like the phone rings or somebody walks in or whatever. It's like, ah, damn it. So, yeah. Well, if you have an Android phone, if you have a, <laughs> this is like the episode of bad segues, I think. <laughs> and lots of rambling. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's new though? That's like every episode. It's true. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, you can listen to uh, Stitcher on your iPhone, on your uh, on your Android phone, uh, on your tablets, whatever device that you may have. They have an app for it. And uh, you can go to stitcher.com slash galactic netcasts and then enter the promo code galactic netcasts. And this is just like Audible. We're sending people, you're, we're sending you to that URL so it shows Stitcher that we're sending people like you to that URL. So again, stitcher.com slash galactic netcasts. Enter the promo code galactic netcasts and uh, listen to our shows. Listen to uh, similar shows to ours. There's actually a smart station feature, which uh, Stitcher kind of looks at what you're listening to and uh, makes recommendations. And uh, also uh, the news updates. If you're if you have that on your setting as turned on, you will get news updates for breaking news. They will send little pieces of audio down, and you can uh, be caught up on uh, if the if the government is or not uh, open today. <laughs> what? <laughs> What crazy thing did Eric Cantor do this week? Um, so there you go. That is uh, Stitcher Smart Radio. We thank them for their support of uh, the Alien Invasion podcast. Woo! Whoop, whoop. All right, final section. Oh, not final section. We also have feedback, but this is the second to final uh, section of the show. Uh, this is our picks, things that we've watched, listened to, uh, read, played, uh, what else could there be? Smelled. Smelled? Sure. Why not? No. <laughs> no? Okay. All right. That so. would be weird. Centovision. Mm. All right. So oh. my pick this week is the White Mountain Abduction. Does that sound familiar to any of you guys? I was totally there. You, really? No, it's <laughs> not. No, I I have read about uh, Betty and Barney Hill. Um, and mean, I think we actually you? mentioned them. Um, we've mentioned them I, a few times. Yeah, I want to say that we've mentioned them before. So, yeah, yeah a few episodes ago. This is a this is a uh, short documentary. I believe it's just an excerpt. Ex excerpt. Uh, excerpt. Excerpt. Yeah. Oh yeah, we mentioned them whenever I was talking about the neonates because apparently yes. it was the neonates yep. that abducted them. Oh yeah, the like, ones that look like the Greys but not. But yeah, not really. <laughs> the Greys keep getting all the credit. They have the. I eyes. know the neonates are really frustrating. Curse you, Greys! <laughs> they have the eyes that Brad hates. Oh, creepy human eyes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That ain't right. So anyway. Okay, so this, this is a documentary, and it was a part of a larger documentary, but I got the feeling that I got pretty much the whole story out of it, so I was satisfied, half hour long. And basically, uh, what happened to Barney and Betty Hill on the night of September 19th, 1961? Their niece investigates the world's most famous case of alien abduction with the help of renowned ufologist and physicist Stanton Friedman, uh, the short film takes a look at what happened the night, uh, that night and the lasting repercussions. For example, Barney turned into an alcoholic because of what happened. They were, they were like upstanding citizens. They were involved in the community. Uh, not many people had a problem with her being white and him being African American. Um, they, were, they were involved with causes in their community. Both uh, uh, were very smart people, and, and it seemed like this incident really messed, really effed them up for life after this. Um, what was some of the highlights of this? Oh, did you guys know that they both went under hypnosis? Yes. And they pretty much, well, they pretty much, like, described the exact same thing, like, to a T. It was amazing. 
And it's scary to listen. Like on this documentary, they actually played some of the tape back from when Barney was actually Barney and Betty were both hypnotized. But Barney, he's freaking out. And it just it's like it gives you kind of like the shivers a little bit, like, oh my god, that's somebody that's really like totally afraid of what's going on right now. But wow. it's, a, it's an interesting story. I mean, they kind of uh, they kind of trace uh, the history of their story. Like they 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 interview people that were like were involved in Benny and Barty's life, and um, they kind of trace the steps of where they got abducted, and they bring some fabric from Betty's dress to some like scientist who analyzes the material because it was like this substance that was on it that they could never explain and. I forget exactly what the conclusion that was made out of that. Um, and also, oh, they were out on the site where they supposedly got abducted, and uh, this niece of Benny and Barney Hills and Stanton Friedman actually had um, a sighting when they were filming. There was uh, unexplained lights in the sky that <laughs> were reported all over the area. That night, that and they showed it on film. It was pretty cool. <laughs> and supposedly, I didn't know about this, but uh, Betty had other like, like contact or like sightings throughout her life, and she went on to like investigate other sightings and other encounters. Like she kind of became a ufologist because of what happened to her, and it, mainly after Barney passed away. Mm. So, yeah, he he was pretty traumatized, and yeah, it sounds like he had PS, PTSD. He basically yeah. it it scarred him. He couldn't sleep. It he turned into like a insomniac because of this. It's crazy. Yeah. So that's my pick, uh, the White Mountain abduction. Uh, you can get it through our link on our picks page at uh, galacticnetcasts.com. Cool. Who's next? Me! You! <laughs> um, my pick is a movie called Devil Girl from Mars, and it's from 1954, and it was made in the UK. Yeah. <clears throat> and I really dig the IMDb little summary. <laughs> Um, that they include, it says, an uptight, leather-clad female alien armed with a ray gun and accompanied by a menacing robot comes to Earth to collect men uh, as breeding stock. Yes! Sign me up! (laughs) She was really uptight, though. Okay. Ridiculously so. Um... So yeah, the the alien, uh, Naya, is a commander from Mars, and she was actually on her way to London to snatch up some Earthmen, and she ended up, I think she ended up hitting an airplane is what it looks like, or implied at the beginning, which caused damage to her ship, and so she had to land um, somewhere in the highlands of Scotland. And uh, she ends up landing by this little inn um, where that's basically closed for the winter, but there's this scientist, uh, Professor Hennessy, who's um, actually being sent out to investigate a previous sighting of a meteor, which is later uh, pretty much concluded that it was a chunk of her ship that like fell off before she landed. And um, <clears throat> I hate when that happens. I know! And so they're venturing out really late at night and they decide to stop at this inn to see if there's a place to sleep because it's really late. And they're like, well, we're closed, but we'll see what we can do. So they go ahead and let them in and stay. And prior to that, there was some guy that broke out of jail and also ended up at the inn. Um, And so you had the professor, his partner, and then you had some guy that broke out of jail, and then you had some lady from London. And... um, you had the old couple that ran the bar in the hotel and a couple of other characters. I forget their names. Those make the best stories, though, when they're a bunch of like people that wouldn't normally interact. Get right. And there's a couple of love stories that kind of bug me, especially... Um, well, it turns out one of the ladies that works at the bar, um, the escaped convict 
is someone that she knew from like her past and she took the job at the bar at this inn to uh, basically wait for the convict to eventually get out of jail but like legitimately but he decided to escape because he was tired of being in jail I guess um, and then the other love story crops up when this lady from London meets the professor's assistant or news is the newspaper guy uh, that was hanging out with the professor because he wanted to write a story about it and so it's like they meet and within 24 hours she's dropping the L word oh. <laughs> and I was like really this guy needs to run <laughs> she's like but, but I love you and I'm like no <laughs> future stalker gonna kill the rabbit <laughs> So I was like, no, this really doesn't need to be a thing. Um, but then he was like, oh, I love you too. And then like five minutes later, he's like, whatever, I was just saying crap to save my ass. So <laughs> he was kind of a tool. Um, but yeah, it, the, the alien, she was very, like as the description says, she's uptight. And uh, she's very belittling of humans in general. She puts them down a lot and basically calls them stupid. <clears throat> but she has this robot, and he amuses me so. I uh, think like refrigerator box. I'm like these. <laughs> yeah. and, and there's like this little dome with like a little string of lights that does this number. And he walks down this the ramp from the UFO. And it's basically like a stereotypical kind of flying saucer-esque shape and um, <clears throat> with the middle that like spins around. And um, for some reason when it walks down the ramp and kind of walks around, did you guys ever see What About Bob with Bill Murray? Yes. And Bill Murray is doing baby steps around the office. Yeah. That's kind of what it reminds me of, like baby steps out the door baby steps to the elevator and <clears throat> the robot's like baby steps down the ramp <laughs> and um, I don't really know the point that she displayed the big giant robot um, but here we go Brad's got it <laughs> he's <laughs> freaking huge <laughs> he's huge I'm like think refrigerator <laughs> box with legs I really the person that's in it can probably see out of this little porthole thing oh, here, <laughs> if they're lucky. But look I at that, that knee like set up there. That has to be heck. Just that's why he was taking baby steps. Ah. Yeah, I was like baby steps down the ramp, baby steps across the field, and then he would like shoot things and like just destroy them. He would vaporize like this little storage shack and a tree and a bush. And I assume it was just uptight alien lady's way of showing that she's got power and resources, I guess. Pew, pew, pew! Uh, it's, just <laughs> it's just intimidation, that's all it is. Pretty much. Yeah, you will see um, your alien powers. Yeah, and everyone tried to come up with <laughs> ideas and plans to like scheme against <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this alien and thwart her plans of harvesting men are those VU to replenish their population. Brad, are those VU meters on that robot? It looks like No, it kind of looks like that though. You talking about these things here? Yeah. yeah. Now, uh they don't look like it. They just look like they're design elements. Okay. <laughs> so that's a pretty <laughs> robot. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure they had to have um like the guy inside the refrigerator box had to have levers because like the arm raised really slowly so he could shoot things and then like put his arm back slowly so I'm sure they had like a little lever that they <laughs> pew, pew, swung pew. or lever um, but yeah they, they had levers inside that they probably had to move around but um did did yeah. okay, did I have a question? Did the uptight leather clad female alien talk with a British accent? Actually, I don't remember what accent she used because they had like British and Scottish and I guess American or Canadian or something like. Um, Canadian. 
I'm like, I don't know. They sound like Americans. A? The news yeah, reporter. Yeah, they end everything with A? That's usually, or, or say a boat? W were they really nice? Uh, no, it was actually the jerk, so he's probably American. Um, <laughs> Did they say we're not American? Did I don't remember apologize? saying that we Did were American apologize? or not. Did they apologize a lot? No. <laughs> I, like I said, he was a jerk, so he's probably American. <laughs> That's true. So, Freaking um, Americans. I know. But I lost my train of thought. Yeah, damn it, Brad. Why did you make her lose her train of thought? I do that all the time. So, um... Do, 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 do. So yeah, okay. <laughs> um, the the main reason why she's coming, I think I've already mentioned, to Earth, is to basically gather up a bunch of men to help replace the dying male population on Mars. Okay. And um, <clears throat> the science, the scientist or the professor, really wants to get on this spaceship and see how things work, and so she kind of comes inside and tells him about like her awesome technology and then she like kicks him off the ship but he's wanting to go with her he's like well you need a guy to take you to London and do this this and that <laughs> and so she's like yes I do need a guide and then she decides she's gonna try to choose someone from the group and like the scientists initial plan was to try to destroy the ship like once inside but hmm. he didn't get to go Spoilers. Sounds fascinating. So, yeah, I mean, it cheesy 1950s sci-fi movie with refrigerator box man. You have to appreciate it. <laughs> that was like the best part of the movie. It's like baby steps down the ramp, baby steps across the set. <laughs> pew. <laughs> pew pew pew. <laughs> pew. <laughs> All right, awesome. So yeah. Devil Girl uh, from Mars. All right. Where, where, how did you watch this? In what? I form? watched it on Amazon. Okay, cool. We'll put a link in the uh, the recommend uh, the picks. Uh, pay it's on Prime. At Casey or at. <laughs> at Casey at KCRR. Yeah, I was gonna say Casey. <laughs> I know <laughs> that's what you're going for. <laughs> that's my other job. Galacticnetcasts.com. All right, Brad. What is your pick? Uh, I don't have a pick this week. Okay. Uh, time for feedback. <laughs> Actually, I went with a uh, uh, one of the few episodes that really kind of dealt with an alien life form. Uh, the series Cowboy Bebop. I, I totally enjoy this series. Uh, it is anime. Uh, it is a just a, a really well done story, and one episode in particular um, is the only one that I can. Thinking back through everything, it's the only one that deals with an alien life form, and that uh, they didn't have episodes; they were called sessions. <laughs> well, I think it, it had a jazz music, undertone. Though. Yeah. There was a jazz music was very much a part of of the feel of of the whole series. So when was the series out, or is it still out? Is it, uh, still out? It, it was done uh, ninety eight. Yeah, pre, I want to say uh, late nineties. Two thousand. Yeah, pre two thousand. Because I remember seeing a couple of episodes and just thinking, like, wow, I really dig the music in this series. So yeah. I can see why they would call the episodes sessions. Yep. And uh, the episode is called Toys in the Attic. I'm going to give you a, not to be confused with the Aerosmith album. Um, huh? Hit you with some classic rock there. Yeah, Bam. I like it. <laughs> Face! <laughs> All right. Uh, from IMDB. Uh, after getting swindled by Faye, uh, Faye is one of the crew of, uh, of the, uh, I can't remember the name of the ship now. Shame on me. Um, Jet, one of the other crew members, uh, goes to find a blanket in the storage bay. While there, he is bitten by an unknown creature. Not knowing what it is, he seeks help from Spike and Faye, Spike being another person of this crew, uh, who believe it is simply a rat. In a short time, the scenario becomes more serious than realized. Uh, Jet's injuries become infected, and the rest of the crew begins to fear for their safety. Faye, Ayn, and even Ed are later bitten by the creature. 
Spike is the only one left, and he must confront it or face possible death. Dun dun dun. Bum bum bum. The interesting thing about this show, Cowboy Bebop, uh, follows the adventures of um, Spike and Jet, who uh, are bounty hunters. They eventually pick up uh, a character named Faye Valentine along the way, and then they pick up a, uh, a a young girl hacker named Ed, who is somewhat insane but kind of wise in her insanity, uh, and a dog named Einstein who actually has um, ar artificial intelligence. He's a very super intelligent dog, but nobody really realizes that. <laughs> So the dog doesn't talk, then? The dog does not talk, no, but mm -hmm. it does have um, circuitry. It, it was designed to be smart. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, because they're bounty hunters, they're kind of feast and famine. They catch somebody, they cash in, they've got some money, uh, and then they can eat and do stuff, and then... You know, it takes a while before they find another person uh, to to capture. Now, wait a um, second. Wait, wait, wait a second. Is this like in regular, like our time, or is it no? In the this is no. in the future. Space travel. Uh, oh. We've we've oh. colonized other worlds, uh, mostly in our galaxy. Um, this one, the the episode before this talks about Ganymede, which is one of uh, the moons of Jupiter or Saturn. I can't remember Jupiter. Jupiter. It's Jupiter. It's um, I well, it's one of the four Galilean moons. Okay. Um and uh on Ganymede they do a lot of fishing. Uh, it's been it's been slightly terraformed. Um that comes into play because we find out in Toys in the Attic that this creature I don't want to give too much away. Um but this creature actually has something to do with Ganymede. And we come to find out that with the feast and famine mentality, um, sometimes members of the crew will squirrel things away so that the others don't find it. <laughs> and they have, they have their own stash of, of things, uh, be it money, food, whatever, that they try to keep from the others just in case, because you never know. So, um, and this this creature uh, is actually from a forgotten bit of bounty, uh, this squirreled away stuff that uh, Spike has 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 put uh, in a safe place and has forgotten about. So, he accidentally creates life, is what it boils down to. So, the humans are out in the galaxy, colonizing planets. They never run into actual alien life? It's all just human beings out there? Yes. Hmm. I don't like the sound of that. I want aliens Well, it's kind of like Serenity. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, so... That, that's um, obviously it came out many years before Serenity, but um, it uh, very much deals with the name Cowboy Bebop, um, a fas fascination, a Japanese fascination with parts of American culture, uh, music. Um, the Seatbelts is the name of the group that uh, does the music for the show, and they actually. Uh, mimic a lot of different styles of music, of American music, be it blues, jazz, um, and things like that, and the cowboy portion comes from them being bounty hunters. Okay. So, uh, a, a wonderful, there's a, there's a number of episodes, and then they did a movie um, called Knocking on Heaven's Door, uh, which was really kind of trippy and very interesting tale uh, well, that kind like of fits it. into the universe. Do they have a lot of their titles uh, based on rock songs and album, title, or album titles? Um, 
you know, that's a very good question. I would have to take a look real quick. Because they're way to heaven, toys in the attic. <laughs> um, Knocking on heaven's door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, episode list. Let me take a look here real quick. Kind of hope I'm right. Uh, no asteroid blues, honky tonk women. Yeah. Um, sympathy for the devil. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Uh, Toys in the Attic, which I mentioned before. Bohemian Rhapsody. Wow. <laughs> Black Dog Serenade could be a tip of the hat to Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Wild Horses. Rolling Stones. Uh, Hard Luck Woman. I forget who that was. Uh, yeah, that's all I can see here. I'm but they actually, the, the music was such a part of it that the seatbelts actually released a number of Cowboy Bebop uh, CDs. Mm -hmm. um, I think like four or five volumes. Uh, and it's just, uh, and I, I have them, and they're just wonderful to listen to because they, they jump around in different styles, and they just just master it. It's beautiful. Beautiful to listen oh. to. So, um, I might have to watch this. It's, it is anime, but it is really good anime, and you, it's very much character driven, so you learn a lot about these individual characters. The episode where we deal with Einstein, the, the dog, <laughs> Einstein's story is completely off the rails, interesting, and nobody knows. It's like you, the viewer, and the dog are the only ones in on the secret. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just fascinating. And they have one episode that is amazingly disturbing. Um, and it is uh, Pierre Le Faux. And it deals with... Uh, basically, there is a like carnival that goes on, and this uh, Poirot Le Faux, I'm sorry, uh, is an assassin. And he's a very strange and fascinating assassin, and how they made him into an assassin is so horrifying of a story. And we as viewers get to kind of see flashbacks from, from uh, 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 Perot's perspective. And uh, I, I can't say enough about this. Uh, it went from 98 to uh, 99, and then they did uh, a movie, a follow-up movie called uh, Knocking on Heaven's Door. Um, if you get the chance, uh, find it, watch it. It's Where did you watch this? Um, I had a friend that uh, had the series and uh, permanently lent me them, <laughs> but you can purchase them. Um, they are uh, definitely available for purchase. I'm going to look at Amazon real quick. And actually, I, I lost one of my three volumes, so I need, to, I need to purchase them. Yeah, it looks like Amazon has them, so we will have them on the Picks page at galacticnetcast.com. It looks like you can get it in DVD, Blu-ray, Universal Media Disc, and VHS. So. Yeah, it was, it was such a huge sensation. Um, that it, it went international. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's well done, well written. Uh, the animation is not crappy by any stretch of the imagination. The cinematography is well worthy of any director uh, of live action stuff today. It's just top notch anime, top notch. Can't say enough about it. So there you go. All that right. is my pick. The episode session eleven, toys in the attic. Great picks, everybody. We had uh, Cowboy Bebop. We had Devil Girls, Devil, Devil Girl from Mars, and uh, the White Mountain Abduction. All right. Um, like I keep on saying, we have a picks page at galacticnetcast.com, galacticnetcasts.com, in which you can uh, order this stuff through, and then uh, you help out us financially in a small, small way whenever you do that. So go ahead. And uh, feel free to uh, browse, peruse the Pix page, and uh, maybe order something and help out the network. That would be awesome. You can also follow us on Twitter, 
You can circle us on Google Plus and like us on Facebook. Uh, we're all over the place on the social networks. Of course, please subscribe uh, via iTunes, via Stitcher, via any kind of pod uh, podcast catcher that you have on your device or on your computer. You can go to uh, galacticnetcasts.com and just find our episodes there as well. All right, before we wrap up, we have a bunch of feedback this week. Woohoo! Sweet! Yeah. So uh, let's start with the most constructive feedback from Jeff. Uh, he says, hey guys, Jeff from California, love the show a lot. I mean, a lot. He capitalizes a lot. Okay? <laughs> but please, 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 way less Doctor Who talk. I am not a Doctor Who, f I'm not a Doctor fan, and sometimes the show becomes almost a Doctor Who podcast, or as he said it, Doctor podcast. Uh, just one guy's opinion. Well, we appreciate your opinion, Jeff. Uh, keep up the great entertainment you provide. He ends with that. Sometimes well, you. we just can't help it, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> we will, okay, it's kind we, of the same way in time traveling robots in space. Okay, and and coming off last week last week's episodes, I can see where that would be frustrating because we had the same story on two shows. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> If Heavy was, saturation on the Doctor Who last week. Yeah, if he was listening to both our shows last week, I'm, I can see how he got frustrated with the Doctor Who talk. <laughs> we just can't help it. But uh, for for Who fans, it was really, really kind of a big deal. Yeah. Uh, so we'll try to we'll try to whenever it's appropriate, we'll talk about Doctor Who. But we'll we won't go out of our way to talk about it. All right, so, so our next... Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for l letting us know, uh, reaching out to us, giving us feedback. We appreciate it. All right, so the next one, that was an email. The next piece of feedback came to us from Stephen Gary Bailey on Facebook. He liked our Facebook page, and he wrote this. Hi, I'm Steve from the UK. I listen to Alien Invasion and Time Traveling Robots in Space on Stitcher. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Steven, uh, great shows. I listen every week. By the way, my Stitcher usage is now up to 1,312 hours. <laughs> yeah. I've got a We're ways only, to go. Yeah, like 900 some odd hours <laughs> behind. Black in there, Brad. Yeah, Come on. I, I, need to, I need to step it up. And then so. he, he wrote back, he, he made another comment on his first comment. I clean a lot. I got four kids. LOL. <laughs> I bet you you do. So the kids yeah. running around being crazy. He's got his head. Four four kids. You need something to listen to, like keep you sane, probably sometimes. <laughs> yeah. He tells, so. he tells his wife, "Yeah, I got more cleaning to do. I'll I'll be vacuuming with <laughs> headphones on." <laughs> Cleanest, Did he just <laughs> cleanest flat in the UK. <laughs> He's brilliant. <laughs> All right, and finally, um, we just got this like today. Uh, this is from Big John QLD. I don't know what that is short for. Or Queensland, if... Australia. Oh, okay. Bam! Thank you. You're you're <laughs> awesome, Brad. Uh, that's 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 my guess, but I, I think I'm right. Okay, Big I'm John, sure right. England, Australia here. Uh, like your work, I'm a long way from Melbourne, but I never heard of sheep being dropped from UFOs on ABC Radio News. <laughs> and I think he's referring to a story that we had a while ago of the, from the the it was a Guten story, right? Yes, it was a Guten story that. Well, I don't think we officially did the story. I think. I referenced it. Okay. I think I was like in Alaska or something when it happened. Oh. And yeah, yeah, okay. I did a story, and then the story that I prepped made reference to these sheep and stuff being dropped. And I'm wondering if Big John from Queensland, Australia, is the same person that friend requested me on Facebook the other day. <gasps> oh yeah. <laughs> 
So if it is, I have a new friend on Facebook. Hi, John. <laughs> John, welcome, welcome to the world of Anessa. <laughs> and he, well, he, he befriended Brad first at some point because I told Brad. Yeah, like, she's like, do you know this guy? And I'm like, uh, I know that we've gotten some friends from Australia recently, but I'm not sure. And so. then she did all these stalker legwork and looked through my uh, list of friends. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do the stalker legwork. If you click on somebody, it says who their mutual friends oh, are. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Thank so you just very much. Mild stalking. <laughs> Mild stalking. I don't mind. I'm, You're my I'm not that it's crazy. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> not like I, I'm. I'm not like overly attached to girlfriend. Free, free. It's like oh. so. Google Maps says it takes you like ten minutes to get from work to home, and you took thirteen. Who is she? <laughs> <laughs> no, that does not happen. No, that's not me. <laughs> like, uh, Anessa, open your eyes really. Take your glasses off and open your eyes really wide. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> do it again, do it again, do, whoa, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I assume there's a screenshot in there. I oh, probably should have tilted my head like... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <sighs> <laughs> and that was totally a visual joke. And yeah, that's a visual thing with Brad and I with wide and eyes and smiles looking at the camera. That's why you need to go to <laughs> youtube.com slash galactic netcast. Oh, Lord, yes. And, I, and John, by the way, you have not friended me. <laughs> wrong with me? <laughs> Aww. Well, you've think... got a huge list of friends. Maybe he already... Oh, oh no, that's right, because he would have shown up as... as uh, yeah, I just yeah, he only showed up as I had one mutual friend, and that mutual friend was Brad. I did not see Dave. Yeah, well, you're, the, you're the boss, so maybe he's intimidated by you. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, John. <laughs> <laughs> friend me. You. Talking about you. <laughs> well, thanks to uh, Jeff, yeah, Stephen, and uh, John for taking the time to, to give us some feedback. Really appreciate it. Hell yeah. I love oh, getting yeah. feedback. It's uh, always so wild to especially hear people from all I mean, over. UK, Australia. The other side of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of the planet, the other side of the continent. We need to get somebody so. from Peru now to, to correct us on their Air Force. Yeah. <laughs> Cap. <laughs> all right, so our voicemail number is 805-328-3966. If you care to leave a message there, you can... Uh, Email us, galacticnetcasts at gmail.com. So that's going to do it for this Alien Invasion podcast number 86. Final thoughts? Uh, Thor is coming out in When's just a couple weeks. Uh, yeah, November, November 7th. 8th, 7th, yeah, okay. We have Thor coming out. We have uh, Ender's Game coming out. I assume yes. it's probably a midnight release. And maybe it is November 8th. I want to say 7th, though. I'm excited. I'm definitely going to see Ender's Game. Yes. I want to see I need see to read it. that book. Y you really do. Uh, I, I really want to... Because I, I've read the book a while ago, and I really want to see how... There's some rough stuff in the book. I think we've talked about that before, and I'd like to see how, how they allude to it or touch on it in, in the film. Yeah, there's some deep there's some deep issues going on in that book. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> deep. Yeah. His his psychotic brother, oh my god. Yeah. Well I mean it, it kind of asks the question how far do we go tinkering with mankind and how far do we go to defend ourselves from an attack. And yeah. how much responsibility should a little child have? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, Anessa, what's your final thought? Um, actually, I this just popped in my head, but I had dinner with one of my friends who's also a TA for the physics department, and he asked me, he's like, oh, so what are you guys going to talk about on the show? And so I was telling him about the stories, and then I told him about your recommendation for Audible. <laughs> And he was like, Ryan's rule, all podcasts eventually lead to tentacle porn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we know what the title of this, epi this episode is. 
Oh, it's no tentacle porn, but it'll do. Yes. <laughs> All right. So Thank you. That would Ryan? Be Ryan. Ryan. Good job, Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Great, great, great job. Our All right, that's going to do it for Ryan's. Huh? No, I said our plethora of Ryans in the physics yes. department. Oh. oh, wait, am I supposed to say, who's Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which one? All right, that, Which one? Okay, Ryan? Let's, let's wrap this up. We're, we're going along here. Yes, we are. Uh, Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, that's going to do it for uh, the Alien Invasion number 86. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.